Have you ever wondered how your money compares to others? What's the average save for retirement? How does your income stack up? What about spending? Looking at these numbers can show you where you stand and if you're ahead financially. Some of these figures might surprise you. I'm Chris, and I teach about money, personal finance, and investing. If you want to improve your finances, subscribe to the channel and like this video. When you work for a paycheck, do you think you earn more or less than the average worker? According to the U.S. Department of Labor Statistics, the median income for a full-time worker is $1,041 per week, or about $52,000 per year, based on a 40-hour work week. This equals about $26 per hour before taxes. This figure is for an individual, not household income, which includes all members living in a home, like spouses and dependents. The Federal Reserve data shows the median amount saved for retirement among adults is $65,000. This includes all age groups, but only those with retirement accounts. About one-fourth of Americans don't have any retirement accounts. With $65,000 saved using a 4% withdrawal rate, it would only produce $2,600 per year in income. Those 25 and younger have a median retirement account balance of $1,000, and $786. For the 25 to 34 age group, the median balance is just over $14,000, and it rises to almost $88,000 for those 65 and older. These low amounts are alarming since the average household likely needs $500,000 or more to retire comfortably. Just saving a small percentage of your paycheck and investing it can put you in a better position than the average person your age. The Social Security Administration says the average benefit amount is $1,550 per month. Many Americans rely on Social Security as their only form of retirement income. Those who have nothing else saved will need to supplement it with a job. Remember, $1,550 per month is the average payment, and those who earn less will receive even less. Some people plan for retirement without counting on Social Security and see it as a bonus. The benefit amount varies based on the age you file. Most people can estimate their benefit based on past earnings on the Social Security Administration website. The average household spends about $5,577 per month, according to the U.S. Department of Labor Statistics. Over a year, that's about $67,000 in spending, meaning you'd need to make that much annually to get by. This includes major costs like housing, transportation, and food, which take up a large part of the average budget. Specifically, the average household spends $1,885 per month on housing, which is 34% of total spending, $691 per month on food, and $913 per month on transportation. Credit scores range from 300 to 850, with the average FICO score being 715, according to Experian. Despite what some think having a good credit score is important, it affects the mortgage rate you get when buying a home, the terms for a car loan, and other low-interest debt. Keeping a good score is easy if you pay your bills on time. Experian says payment history is the main factor, followed by credit utilization ratio, credit history length, types of credit, and new credit. WalletHub says the average household has $9,260 in credit card debt, which is one of the worst kinds of debt due to high interest rates. If you're paying 15%, 20%, or 25% interest, it far exceeds what you could earn by investing in the stock market. This cancels out any retirement investing you do. Credit cards also encourage wasteful spending. So much of that debt is likely from buying unneeded items like clothes, electronics, and random online purchases. These items usually have little value later. The solution is to pay your balances in full every month and only buy what you can afford or use a debit card. Tracking your net worth helps you see your progress as you build wealth. Net worth shows your financial health and highlights strengths or weaknesses. It's calculated by adding up everything you own, like your home, vehicles, and retirement accounts, then subtracting what you owe, like a mortgage. The Federal Reserve says the median net worth for U.S. households is about $122,000. For those under 35, it's less than $14,000. 
For ages 35 to 44, it's $91,000. For 45 to 54, it's $168,000. For 55 to 64, it's $212,000. And for 65 to 74, it's $266,000. These figures are easy to exceed with a reasonable income and discipline. The average savings rate in the United States, as reported by the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis, stands at approximately 6%. This figure reflects the portion of income individuals set aside after taxes to fund various financial goals, such as purchasing a home, renovations, buying a new car, funding college education, saving for retirement, or covering unexpected expenses. However, allocating just 6% towards savings often leaves individuals with insufficient funds for retirement, especially after fulfilling short-term and medium-term financial obligations. For instance, the average down payment for a home amounts to $62,000, while a typical kitchen renovation costs around $26,000. Furthermore, purchasing a new car can set one back by over $47,000. Given these substantial expenses, Financial experts recommend saving a more robust portion of income, ideally between 10% to 15%, exclusively for retirement planning. Those aiming to retire early may need to save even more. It's also advisable to set aside funds for other future expenditures to ensure financial stability and meet long-term financial goals. Everyone wants to retire early, but Ramsey Solutions says the average retirement age is 61 even though most people can't collect full Social Security benefits until 67. This discrepancy highlights a significant challenge in retirement planning. According to the Social Security Administration, someone who reaches the age of 65 can expect to live another 19 to 21 and a half years, emphasizing the need for substantial financial resources to support a comfortable retirement. Retiring in your early 60s typically means you've been working for around four decades, Starting to invest early is crucial because it allows you to take advantage of the power of compound interest, which can significantly grow your savings over time. However, the question remains, will retiring at 61 provide you with enough time and financial stability to enjoy your post-work years fully? At 61, you might still have good health and mobility, enabling you to pursue activities and experiences that require physical fitness. But how long will this period of good health last? The uncertainty of future health and longevity adds complexity to retirement planning. It's challenging to predict how your financial situation will evolve, and it can often feel like you're not making sufficient progress towards your goals. Nevertheless, reviewing financial statistics and benchmarks can offer valuable insights into your financial health. You might be pleasantly surprised to find that you're doing better than you initially thought, which can motivate you to continue improving your financial habits and strategies. Understanding where you stand financially can provide reassurance and help you make informed decisions about your retirement plans. While the idea of retiring early is appealing, it's essential to consider various factors, including the age at which you can collect full Social Security benefits, your expected lifespan, and your overall financial health. By starting to invest early and regularly reviewing your financial progress, you can increase your chances of enjoying a secure and fulfilling retirement. Subscribe to our channel and get rich.